Today's project is going to be a vice restoration. And this vice is a Miller's Falls vice. And it measures about two and a half inches across the top there. And this is just a good old fashioned bench vice. But let me tell you, the quality on this is amazing. You can see here how it's got these supports, the weight of it. Um, the handle here basically has got no bends in it, which is fantastic. Tells you about the quality. Here on the bottom, this little piece here is going to need to be addressed. And I'm excited to do this project for a couple reasons. Number one is I'm going to, hey, I'm going to get to use the lathe to make a part for here. And I've been itching to do that. And the second reason is I've been looking to paint something with this orange color, Chevy orange. I just love Chevy orange. Uh, I love the old 57 Chevys that had the orange in it. I love painting, you know, valve covers or engine blocks orange, transmissions orange. I think that's just a cool color. I bought that a while ago and have just been looking for an opportunity to use it. And I think this is it. I don't know if I'm going to paint the whole vice orange. Um, I'm thinking maybe this, this piece will be orange and then this black. I don't know, maybe I won't use it all together. Uh, there's a couple of reasons I'm really excited. Um, as well as this here, I ordered these on eBay and it came all the way from Canada, so that took a while. And what these are, are Miller's Falls decals. Um, and I'm looking to really make this look original with the Miller's Falls decals. And it's kind of funny, you can see there, it's kind of crooked. That's the way they came from the factory, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, I don't did not know a lot about Miller's Falls until the last couple of years just from YouTube and other guys collecting them known for making really good quality stuff. Miller's Falls is a place uh, it's named after the plate the manufacturing uh, plant that was in Miller's Falls, I guess was it, which was in Massachusetts. Um, I did a little bit of homework on it, and that's kind of what I like about collecting and restoring tools is that you learn about companies and, and different brands, and this is something, like I said, wasn't on my radar until about a year or two ago, but I've learned since that really good, high-quality stuff, um, you know, started in, I think, the 1860s or so, and it changed hands a little bit later on, around 1960. I think Ignisol Rand purchased them in about 1962. And they made good quality stuff till up about 82. Then the company changed hands a bunch of times since. Uh, but I look forward to getting into it. So let me get started. As you can see here, that threaded screw is just gunked up with probably 60, 70 years worth of old crusted up grease. So even when I had it all the way out, I still had to bang out those two support slides to free it up. And what I like about this vise is it actually has that little screw there and that holds that lead screw that uh, allows the jaws to open and close. And that's much better than those rings that I've done in the past that are just a pain to get off. And then here I am just cleaning up that 70 year old crust um, and I'm using super clean there. And then full disclosure, they did give me that uh, to try out and I was very happy with it. And uh, if you don't believe me, ask the missus. She used this to clean up a lot of different things around the house and she absolutely loved it. So I'll continue to use it and give you updates on that. But as you can see here, it really helped uh, cut all that grease off the stuff. And here I'm using the Maxi Film Royal Purple. If you haven't seen my video, check it out. Here I'm using it as a penetrant. Love it as a protectant, but haven't used it too much as a penetrant. And it seemed to work pretty well. I didn't give it too long to sit, as you can see there. I'm just banging on it here and uh, eventually worked it out. There I'm using a little bit of heat and then ultimately the dead blow in the jaw horse freed it up. Then I brought it over to the belt sander with like a medium grit um, belt and that really helped just shine it up and I did actually put a couple of small marks in it with the vice grip but uh, nothing that the belt sander and then over here to the fiber wheel couldn't take out. Then finally finished buffing it out here with a little bit of polishing compound on the buffer. So I'm about to call it for tonight, but I just want to show you where I am at this point. Um, I did, gave it a quick shot on the wire wheel just to kind of see what I was up against once I got under some of that old paint and patina. And normally, you know, that could be ground down, but you can see there's a couple of spots, mainly right there. 
that is pretty deep. Yeah, but you see that? It really goes in. So I think what I'm going to do is drop a little JB Weld in there. And then once I hit this with the flap disc, I should be able to grind that all down. I kind of like the casting on it. Sometimes the castings on these old vices are really rough. But this looks like it was pretty nicely finished. I think if I just hit that with a pretty stiff wire wheel, it'll leave a nice finish when I paint it. Um, the old paint came, whatever this overspray paint was, uh, came off nice. But another problem I found is over here. I don't know. Can you see that? These threads, look at that. That is a problem because I cannot screw it past right there. It's, and I'm going to have to see. Hopefully my Lyle rethreading kit, I'll be able to address that. So I need to address that. I need to make a piece for that in the lathe. I got a lot of wire wheeling ahead of me. Um, seems like it's going to come off pretty easy, but hey, it takes, it's going to be a couple hours of work between wire wheel and flap disc. And so I'm going to call it for tonight. And uh, this looks like it's in great shape. Look, normally this here, sometimes you see is really dinged up. Obviously, you know, I'll throw this on the belt sander and take out those little nicks, but that's as good as you could expect for a vice of this age. And Look there, look how nice it says Miller Falls. Is that nice or what? I just took off a little bit just with the wire wheel, but it'll be easier with the fiber wheel to get a lot of that patina off. All right. And here is my Lang re-threading kit. I absolutely love that thing. For 65 bucks, it'll save you so much time. And as you can see there, I took the pitch gauge, matched it up, and I just you know, was really cautious to make sure I had the right um, thread. And what I did there, as you can see, is where it was really marred up and boogered up, I used a little bit of a red Sharpie to identify those spots. And then I just used it as a draw file. I would draw it back and forth. And then once it kind of caught a groove, you could you know, go back and forth at a little quicker uh, pace. But as you can see here, I run it up, still not where it needs to be. And you know, it's, a, it's patience, but uh, I kind of enjoy doing this. Uh, to me, this is kind of a really, a uh, relaxing activity and very satisfying. And finally here, look at that. All the red is off and up it went. Then into the garage. And if you guys haven't seen my video on this, I had a lot of fun making this. This is my tool tote challenge from the Scout Crafter Challenge. And I made a uh, specific tool tote to hold my angle grinder. And there it is. And Broke out the angle grinder with the flap disc. I think I had about an 80 grit on there. And if you look at the jaws, you can kind of see where I did drop that JB weld in those deep grooves. Um, and that helped me from really having to take, you know, a lot of material off this vise. And then what I did is I just kind of really wanted to, you know, not only take the marks out, I wanted to square up the edges where there was like some rough castings. But overall, like I said, most of the castings were in pretty good shape. And there I'm just squaring up the edges. And another thing to keep in mind is always try to keep the vise together as you're sanding. So that way everything will just line up perfect. Uh, made that mistake early on, not this time. And after that, I just cleaned it up on a nice soft wire wheel and that helped getting all those nooks and crannies and knock all that excess paint off. And I did that at the edge of my garage. So I'll just blow everything outside and you can't hear it here because I got it muted, but it sounds like my bearings are starting to go in that uh, Delta. I'll have to get that, uh, take a close look at that. And then just uh, any of the surfaces that needed a little bit more polishing finished up on the fiber wheel. So now it was time to use the lathe and I had to figure out how to make that crossbar that goes into that bottom hole there. And I just couldn't figure out how I was gonna make a crossbar strong enough to get into that small little hole. The whole time during this project, I was assuming I was gonna make a crossbar similar to that. And then I came across this Miller's Falls vise and look at that knob on there. And it clicked, I said, wow, that's gotta be the solution. There must have been a model that had a knob. 
and as you can see there, there's a little pin that goes into the handle that holds it to the thread. And that would make perfect sense why I have such a small hole. And then here, this is a Model 217. Mine's actually in 664, but very similar. I'm not sure what the differences are, but they got $37 for this one, plus shipping in pretty uh, rough used condition. Basically similar to mine prior to being uh, restored. So I think I got a good deal. I paid $12 for mine and all restored up should be worth considerably more. So what I have there is a one and a half inch piece of Delrin type product that I picked up um, on Zorro uh, recently. And I put it into my Erie pipe vise that I did the video on not too long ago. Picked up two sweet pipe vices um, on eBay. But as you can see there, not the best way to cut it with the saber saw. Maybe I needed bigger teeth, but every time I cut through it, it was so hot, it would just kind of melt together. Uh, so I had to finish it off uh, with a hacksaw. I have to figure out a better way to cut this stuff. I guess maybe it's just with a hacksaw. And here goes my first official restoration that I'm using a piece that I'm making in my mini lathe. And as you can see there, I just chucked it up and marked where I wanted to cut till uh, so I could kind of make a similar piece to what you saw in those pictures earlier. So I had to take down the diameter and then leave a little bit there for the handle at the end. Sorry for the camera work here. I thought I had the camera in good position and I did. But every time I hit just a little bit of chatter, not that it felt like a lot, it was just enough to kind of uh, jiggle the camera. So I do apologize for that. And in the future, I'll do a better job with that. But I love that shot right there. You can see how nice and smooth and how it's kind of coming together. And there I'm just facing it off. As you can see here, I got a lot to learn using this lathe, but I repositioned the tool in the tool holder and boom, look how nice it cleaned it off when I faced it. And here I'm just taking a second pass at facing it. And then I'm just chamfering it a little bit there, kind of give it a nice little edge and then a couple of cleanup passes. And look how nice, it just leaves a really nice finish on this Delrin when you get it uh, right. And then I rechucked it um, with the handle side, I guess I'll call this facing out. And I had to bring down the diameter on that. And as you can see there, it made pretty quick work of it. You do gotta stop it and just clean it off even though it's nice and clean. Um, just so you, gotta, you can see what you're doing. And then here you, I'm chucking it up and drilling a hole uh, so it'll slide onto that threaded screw. And as you can see there, the nice finish it just leaves on the Delrin. I can't get over. Went back and forth several times to get that right. And then here I'm putting some grooves in it so I have something on that knob to grab as I'm turning it. And what I'm doing is just using my Dremel tool and I'm making four cuts in it. Seem to come out okay, but what happens is the Delrin does heat up a lot and it just wouldn't leave the same finish on the cut grooves there as it left from when I did it with the lathe. And then sometimes you just get really lucky. I'm, I'm zooming in there a little bit, not great, but you can see I marked the hole on the Delrin and I got, I, I don't know, sometimes you measure something, you worry, but it was perfect. I drilled the hole clean through the Delrin right through the hole that was already in the screw and uh, I was a little worried if I was off a little bit but it went through like butter so I knew I had it right and then I got lucky again the drill bit that I selected was actually the exact size that I needed for the screw that I had um, that matched you know the right size tap and that's what I'm doing here is I'm just tapping it all the way through and the Delrin's a you know a pretty solid material so I was able to tap the Delrin tap that small hole that was in the threaded screw and then all the way through the other side
And as luck would have it, the screw I selected did not even need to be cut. It was just perfect. Here I'm just cleaning up my tap with some of that Royal Purple Maxi Film. Great way to keep them from rusting up. All right, this project is in the books. So let me show you how it came out. I love the orange here. Oh, got a little bit of dirt on there. There we go, clean that off. And I love the way the logos look, huh? Those um, decals, they just came out great. There's that screw I was telling you about that really does a nice job of keeping it in position. Look how nice it operates. What I did was I used the maxi film on there um, days in advance, like pre-treated it so it would get like that slick film on it. And then I did put the lightest little coat of uh, Super Lube on there. And as you can see from the back here, all of those edges nice and cleaned up. And let me show you the handle here. Not great, not perfect. I did clear coat it to try to give it a little bit of a sheen. I was thinking of painting it black because the Delrin's kind of like this grayish marble color, but I think it came out pretty good. I mean, you don't, when it's like that, you can see it's a little bit rough there, but it's kind of good. It gives you a grip. I could easily unscrew this and make another piece in time if I chose to do so. You can see the threads came out great. Treated all this with the maxi film. And overall, look at that very very nice the way it came out um, so let's take it look at it on the bench and see how it looks there and it's on the bench and that's the bench i will use it on if and when i need to use it it is pretty so it's going to be one of those ones that we'll see how often i do use it uh, maybe for nice easier projects not necessarily if i'm heating something up or wailing on something uh, i have other vices for that this is a a beautiful old vintage vice and you can see there I went with that larger Miller Falls decal I did have the original size smaller one but I liked it and I put the big one on both sides and the orange paint there it is that's that it's just that really nice enamel for gas and oil resistant three coats of that no clear coat on that the black paint I used this sandable primer first because um, it was black um, I did use the self-etching primer, though, underneath the orange. Um, I wanted to experiment with this black primer. I figured if I was doing black paint, man, I'd give it a shot. But I normally do use self-etching primer. And then what I used on any of the surfaces that I wanted really nice and smooth and to look really great, I used this filler primer. You guys probably seen me use this before. It's almost like body filler in a way. And I put a few coats of that over here and here prior to um, painting it and that just gives you that beautiful finish and then I really love this clear coat I've used a lot of other clear coats but this 2x ultra cover I mean I put probably three or four passes on this and it's just beautiful the way it comes out I've used these ones in the past and they work well don't get me wrong but when it comes to really laying a nice clear gloss I feel like I'd get much better results with this. All right, one last look at it. If you like tool hauls, if you like tool restorations, if you like tool reviews and all that fun stuff, like and subscribe, and I will see you at the next one.